I don't want you to begin to continue to run after man of God. I don't want you to continue and to persistently thinking that there is a help from someone's hand. I want you to know that you can hear the voice of God because the glory of God is for you to be able to hear his voice. And that wrestling was of benefit. It was profitable not only to him, but to his generation. The Bible said the Lord encountered him that day and transformed him by a change of identity. Praise that will shift people's position. And the Holy Spirit opened our eyes to understand that what prayer cannot solve, praise can solve. Then welcome to CTA Ministries. CTA Ministries is not just a church. It's a place where individuals and families are nurtured to fulfill their lives properly. With over 12 years of divine establishment, we have recorded numerous success stories with the help of God. Join our weekly services where you define, discover, and develop all that you need for success. God is set to do something amazing in your life in today's service. Sit tight and be blessed. That even as you worship him today, you are being delivered, your family is being delivered, your nations are being delivered. That even as you worship him today, you receive that healing, you receive that healing, you receive that breakthrough. That even as you worship him today, you will receive that instruction, that instruction that is meant for you, that instruction that is meant for your family, that instruction that is meant for your deliverance. That instruction that will usher you into the new face. That instruction that will grant you direction. Ask him to receive it today. To receive it today. Father, we thank you. Jehovah, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We declare this service open in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the mode of worship. Can we just raise our hands this morning? Glorify the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody lift your voices to the audience of one. Come on, lift your voice to the one who we have come to worship this morning. Let the Lord be your voices this morning. Come on, somebody raise your sound. Yeah, my. 
to it up one more time in this room.
Grace to them. Reveal your love and grace to them. In a personal way, in Jesus' name. In a personal, personal way, in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. We pray for the spiritual well-being and salvation. We pray, we pray for the spiritual well-being and salvation of each member of our families and individuals. Of each members of our families and individuals. Reveal your love and grace to them. Reveal your love and grace to them. In a personal way, in Jesus' name. In a personal way, in Jesus' name. Can we take that to the Lord in prayer? Raka zetere dede. Father, we pray you. God for our families. We pray, oh God, for individuals, oh God, that you reveal your love to them, oh God. Father, we pray for encounters, oh God, that you encounter them in a special way. In the name of Jesus, you will encounter them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let your love, oh God, be seen in their hearts. In the name of Jesus, let your grace abound, oh God. Let your grace abound, oh God. And Father, let there be encounters in the name of Jesus. We pray for the salvation of your souls that, Father, your grace will appear on to them, oh God, and Father, your, soul, your souls will be saved in the name of Jesus. Let your grace abound, oh God. Let your grace abound, oh God. Encounter them, oh God. Let there be strange encounters. Let there be unusual encounters in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be encounters in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' most gracious name we've prayed. Amen. A second prayer point to be taken from Psalm chapter 126, verse 3. It says, The Lord has done great things for us, wherefore we are glad. Please say after me. Father, we pray for joy and laughter. Father, we pray for joy and laughter. To fill our homes. To fill our homes. Help us to create a nurturing and uplifting environment. Help us to create a nurturing and uplifting environment. Where your presence is felt fully in Jesus' name. Where your presence is felt fully in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for joy and laughter to fill our homes. Father, we 
pray for joy and laughter to fill our world. Help us to create a nurturing and uplifting environment. Where your presence is felt fully in Jesus' name. Lift up your voice and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Father, we pray, O oh God, for a nurturing environment, O oh God. In our families, in our families, a nurturing environment, O oh God. In our families, O oh God, where your presence is felt. Where your presence is felt. In the name of Jesus. We pray for a nurturing environment where your presence will be felt, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We'll be praying for Christ Church Evangelism and the body of Christ. And I'm taking my reading from Galatians 3, verse 13. And it says, Christ has redeemed, redeemed us from the cause of the law, having become a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone who hangs on a tree and we say after we say heavenly father, heavenly father we come against every evil cause that has been spoken over the nation by the power of your name we break and nullify every cause declaring freedom and release in jesus name heavenly father we come against every evil cause that has been spoken over our nation by the power of your name we break and nullify every cross declaring freedom and declaring freedom and release in jesus name let's begin to pray in the name of jesus heavenly father we lift away every cross in the name of jesus we declare freedom and release in the name of jesus we declare freedom and release in the name of jesus we declare freedom and release in the name of jesus we declare freedom and release over every cause in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we declare freedom and release in the name of jesus Rada Bashika Basakaba in the name of Jesus. We declare release in the name of Jesus. We declare release and freedom in the name of Jesus. Over every person and nations in the name of Jesus. We declare freedom and release in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, freedom. Freedom over every cause. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Freedom and release over every cause. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. And he said, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We say now, time we say, O Lord, o Lord we pray for the strengthening of the body of Christ. We pray for the strengthening of the body of Christ. In the times of persecution and tribulation, grant us courage and endurance to stand firm in faith in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we pray for strengthening of the body of Christ in the times of persecution and tribulation. Grant us courage and endurance to stand firm in faith in Jesus' name. Let's begin to pray. Father, grant us strength in the name of Jesus. We pray for the body of Christ in times of persecution. Father, grant us strength in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, grant us strength in the name of Jesus to stand firm to the end in the name of Jesus. To stand firm to the end in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, grant us strength. Grant us strength. Strength in the name of Jesus. To stand firm to the end in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, grant us strength. Strength from above in the name of Jesus. Father, we want your strength in the name of Jesus. To stand firm in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, grant us strength in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, strength from you to stand firm in the times of persecution in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Father, give us strength. Strength in the name of Jesus. Oh, strength from above in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, give us strength. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you for answering our prayers. We appreciate you because you are the God we serve. We praise you because these prayers we have prayed. We have not prayed in vain. In the name of Jesus. Father, I accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's jam our hands together and to welcome the expert. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. This morning, uh, the title of our hymn says Amazing Grace. And verse 2 ministers to me a lot. It says, It was grace that taught my heart to fear. 
and it was grace that fear, my fears re relieved. If you have grace, I believe you'll be able to fear God. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 14 says, Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not by the law, but you are by, you are by grace. Please let this minister to you this morning. You can see the um, lyrics on the TV there. Let us minister to you words by words. It's a very powerful hymn this morning. Hallelujah. Amazing Grace House with the sound. Amazing Grace House with the sound. That save a wretch like me. That save a wretch like me. I was once lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I see. Blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught my heart to fear. It was grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear? How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first believed. The hour I first this far. Hallelujah. 
Are you happy to be here this morning? Amen. If you are excited to be in God's presence this morning, can you give God a shout of praise? Can you do that better and louder? Jam those hands together for Jesus. It's his grace that has brought us thus far. Amen. Amen. Before you take your seat, just give a high five to your neighbor and stare him welcome to another hour of encounter. You are welcome to another hour of encounter. Do that with a smile. If your neighbor is not smiling, move to a more serious neighbor and say you are welcome to your hour of encounter. Amen. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. It's another privilege to be in God's presence this morning. We are going to be uh, taking our testimonies. Amen. Testimony time. And higher life in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Lord has been faithful. And I'll be inviting Sister Joan. That he overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Amen. In other words, they got their victory by the blood of the Lamb. And their victory was sealed by the word of their testimony. Amen. for the salvation of my soul and also for the life of my mom. Last week she was sick and um, we took her to the hospital and she was admitted for two days and we thought she had um, kidney or liver disease but after the test everything was fine. She Everything was normal and there was no kidna kidney or liver disease found. And secondly I'm thanking God for um, healing me. 2016 I had um, ovarian cyst that almost cost my life. And the doctor told me that I had two weeks to remove the cyst, or it's gonna cost, um, it's gonna cost something that is really, really bad for me. And the money that I was supposed to use to do the surgery, I sowed the seed, I used the money to sow a seed in my church. And the, the pain stopped. This year, January, I started to feel the pain again. It, and it was so bad. I have been going to the hospital. I've been going back and forth to the hospital since January up to last month. And last month, everything stopped, everything ceased. And I'm so grateful to God for everything. I'm so, so grateful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll be reading these testimonies. I'll be reading this one from Sister Sharon. She wants to thank the Lord for healing. On Friday, she was feeling... She was not feeling fine, and it got worse yesterday. But she's grateful to God that today she woke up sound and healthy. Amen. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Also, she wants to thank the Lord for supernatural provision. Uh, she was expecting something, and it seemed impossible. But she received it this week. Amen. Another testimony of healing and provision. You are next in line for a testimony. You are next in line for healing. You are next in line for supernatural provision. Amen. I'll be reading this other testimony from Assistant Pastor Jason. He wants to thank the Lord for provision and healing. Another provision and healing. Amen. God is stirring the water already. So just get your own testimony. Amen. He wants to thank the Lord for provision and healing in his life and family. This month the Lord has been showing up in ways the least expected. Hallelujah. And finally, I'll be reading this one from uh, Brother David Okafo. He's thanking God for healing, healing again, and always, and always showing up for him whenever he calls upon him. Amen. I'd like you to stand on your feet, and we are going to bless the Lord for this testimony. Let's thank the Lord for the healing, for deliverance. All the testimonies has to do with healing, has to do with provision. Let's say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you did in the life of our brethren. Lord, thank you for healing. Thank you, Lord, for provision. Lord, we are grateful for what you have done. And we are grateful for what you will do in our lives again this morning. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Adonai, we give you praise. We give you glory. We are grateful, O oh God, for what you are doing. Thank you for the healings. Thank you for provision. Thank you, my God, because we do not call on your name in vain. Thank you because when we call, you answer. 
be exalted, be praised in Jesus' mighty name. Finally, you are going to pray for yourself and say, Lord, this is my expectation. I have come in your presence again this morning. This season, oh God, may you meet my expectation in the mighty name of Jesus. May you meet my expectation. Is it healing that you are trusting God for? Is it deliverance that you are trusting God for? Are you trusting God for an open door? Say, Lord, this is what I am trusting you for. I want to be next to testify in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Um, you may have your seat. Um, while seated, just um, say a short prayer to the Lord that even as we take this devotional, that the Lord will speak to each and every one of us individually, that his word will be a sword that will separate the soul from the spirit, that his word will touch each and every one of us in different aspects of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Um, so we'll be taking our devotional today for Sunday, the 14th of April, 2024. If you have the devotional, it's on page 26. And the topic of today is empowered to resist, resisting temptation with God's power. The introduction says, temptation is a universal part of, of the human experience. But as believers, we are not left defenseless. In the face of temptation, God provides a promise and a way of escape. Let's explore the transformative power of God's grace as we resist temptation, drawing inspiration from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. The scripture verse comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, which says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. The reflection says, consider the reassurance embedded in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. God's faithfulness is an anchor in the storm of temptation. Reflect on a recent experience where you felt a pull of temptation. How did you rely on God's promises to resist? What way out did God provide for you to endure the temptation? Personal experience. Share a personal experience where you were tempted and God's power embedded, enabled you to resist. Reflect on the emotions, decisions, and outcomes of that experience. Consider the strength and resilience you found in God's faithfulness. The Bible example. Look to the example of Jesus in the wilderness from Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. Faced with profound temptation, Jesus relied on the power of God's word to resist the schemes of the enemy. His unwavering commitment to truth and reliance on the, on the Father's strength showcase the effectiveness of resisting temptation with God's power. Application. When temptation knocks, turn to God's word for strength and guidance. Memorize and meditate on scripture and address areas where you are vulnerable. Engage in regular prayer seeking God's strength and wisdom. Surround yourself with a supportive community that encourages accountability and prayer. Be intentional about avoiding situations that may lead to temptation. Conclusion. In the midst of life's temptation, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 stands as a beacon of hope. God's promises is not just theoretical. It is a, it is a living reality that we can experience daily. As we confront the challenges of temptation, let us remember that we are not alone. Through the power of God's grace, we have strength to resist and the assurance of a way, to, of, of, a way of escape. In Jesus' name, amen. May we walk in victory. May we walk in the victory Christ has provided, relying on his power to overcome every temptation that comes our way. In Jesus' name. The scriptures for today come from Exodus chapter 10, verse 1 to 20, Daniel um, chapter 11, verse 12, um, chapter 11, verse 21 to 35, 1 Samuel 31, Mark 7, 24 to 30, Job 34, chapter um, verse 10 to 20, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 to 18. May you be blessed by the reading of God's word in Jesus' name.
appreciate God um, for Sister Joanne's testimony. I think yesterday during the family meeting, Daddy said that there was someone with a liver issue. And during the 100 days evidence of prayer, that would be the first testimony. And by the grace of God, we already have one testimony. I beg you just give a round of applause to the Lord of hosts in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I continue, um, on Friday, Pastor was teaching us on perpetual prayer. And he listed a list of men who have practiced this thing. And therefore, there was result. And he said one way to step into this intercessory role after listening a righteous man and every other thing, he said that you must give yourself away. That means you must be a selfless man before God. As you said, I just want you to meditate. How do I let go of myself? Most times we want, we want God to bless what we do instead of looking for what God has blessed to do. Right where you are, just bow your head and just speak to Jesus. Asha Badilika. May my heart become your throne. Dear Lord, may you find your rest in me. May nothing contend for me with you. May you be the Lord of all. Asha. May my life become your throne. Dear Lord, may you find your rest in me. Asha Badilikayaba. May nothing contend for me with you. May you be the Lord of all. May my voice become your voice, dear Lord. Find your expressions through me. I struggle not to be seen. One thing about Jesus was anytime he was faced in a situation where he had to ask God for something. There's one common thing you find. He says, nevertheless, let your will be done. I surrender my whole life to you. Do with me, Lord, as you please. I lay down my plans and I Visions, not my will, but yours be done. All of you and none of me. Thank you, Jesus. Is what my heart cries for. Christ for Lord, Peace for my heart cries. 
Today I surrender myself to you. I surrender my soul to you. My spirit and my body, Lord, I lay down at the altar. I give myself, Lord, that I will have you. I want more of you, Lord. More of you. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I want more of you. I want more of you. I want more of you. Lord, I want more of you. Give me more of you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Are there living souls in the house this morning? Please jam your hands together for Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Come on, give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. If you are happy that you are alive, can you do something for Jesus? Come on, stand to your feet and celebrate Jesus. If Jesus has been faithful to you, if God has been faithful to you, can you celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. You are alive today because God's mercy prevailed over your life. I don't think anyone came here because they felt like, let me make myself be in church today. God made it possible for you to be here today. I want you to walk up to five people, just have a handshake with them. Welcome them to church this morning. Welcome them, welcome someone to church. Give someone a smile. If somebody is, is standing alone, can you just walk up to them and just work on them to church? Thank you, Jesus. And you are good, and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. And you are good. And your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good, and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you are good, and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have hands? Can we use our hands to celebrate Jesus? Come on, jump those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to go into some section of praise. I'd like you to praise God this morning because, you know, one of the reasons that God kept us is to worship him. One of the reasons that God made you is to praise him. If there's anything else you want to do with your life is to praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody excited to be in church this morning. Now let me see your hands. Just put those hands together for Jesus. Just tutu, tutu, let's go. This way. Simple. Let's go. Uh -huh. Make it louder. Do it like you are alive. Is your name sing higher? Sing higher. We praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. Everybody praise his name. Praise your name. We praise your name. We rub up, rub up, rub up. We rub up, we rub up, we rub up, and we praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name, and we rub our 
roba ba ba We roba ba ba We praise your name Everybody praise his name And we praise your name We praise your name And we roba ba ba We roba ba ba And we roll Baba. We praise your name. We praise your name. Jehovah, praise your name. Everybody praise his name. Let me see you praise the Lord. And we roll Baba. Let me see you, let me see you, rubber, 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 we praise your name. We praise your name. Oh, we praise your name. We praise your name. Everybody praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. Everybody dance to the Lord now. Let me see you dance. 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 Shake your body now. Shake your body now. Shake your body now. Shake your body now. Shake, 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 shake. 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 Shake your body now. Give the Lord your dance. 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 Everybody praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. Oh. Everybody praise the Lord. Oh, everybody rub a ba oh. Everybody rub a ba ba. Everybody rub a ba ba. I want to see rub a ba ba. Everybody praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see you dance. Let me see you dance. Let me see you dance. 
Let me see you dance. Let me see you dance. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Jesus. Ready to dance this morning? Yes, sir. Listen, I will praise you, Lord, for your grace on my life. You have blessed me, oh Father. Now I dance like a winner, man. I'll praise you, Lord, for your grace on my life. Now I dance like a winner, man. I will praise you, Lord, for your grace on my life. You have blessed me, oh Father. Now I dance like a winner, man. I'll praise you, Lord, for your grace. Before we go into that, I want you to learn how to dance. It's simple as shifting your body. If I get a better key for my voice, I'll be grateful. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I hear somebody give Jesus a shout of praise? Is that a living soul in church this morning? Somebody want to scatter this place with their praise. Can you give Jesus a quality shout of glory? Come on, give the Lord your dance, give the Lord your dance, give the Lord your dance, let me see you dance, let me see you dance, let me see you dance, a fire, a fire, a fire, a fire, a fire, a fire, a fire. Afayo, 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 Afayo. Break it up, my day morning. Break it up, 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 break it up. Break it up, my day money. 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 Break it up, my Break it up, break it up, break it up. Break it up, break it up, break it up. Break it up, break it up. Lift Jesus higher. 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 Lift Jesus Praise you. No, we say I dey colo. Na God I dey praise you. No, we say I dey praise. Na God I dey praise. If they ask you say you dey praise, you go say. No, we say I dey praise. Na God I dey praise. If they ask you say you dey praise, waiting you go say. No, we say I dey praise. Na God I dey praise. Na God I dey praise you. Fire, 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 fire,
Come on, give the Lord a praise. Jump those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I want to hear that resounding amen. Amen. Come on, jump those hands together for Jesus one more time. And you may please be seated as kings and as queens. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. He loves me and he died for my sins. And so I can shout, and I can shout, oh, I can shout, and praise the Lord, so I can shout, hallelujah, and I can shout. Hallelujah, and I can shout and praise the Lord, so I can shout, oh hallelujah, so I can shout, and I can shout. to just say a prayer as you are seated that the Lord will speak to your heart this morning that the word of God will bring light and understanding to you that you would not get used to God's word anytime Father we thank you you know I saw someone whose father got in touch with you and the father was telling you about his plan to take a second wife and this has been a problem a distress in your heart and you are not sure of what to do a lot of thoughts have flowed through your mind but the Lord have an answer for that tonight if you need to talk about that I will be available after the service because the Lord gave an inspiration on what what that needs to be done. But you who are here today, have you come to seek a man? Have you come because it's a Sunday service? Or have you come because there's something that you want to tap from God this morning? I want you to say that prayer one more time. Lord, visit me today. Visit me today with your word. Let your word transform me. Let your word change me. Let your word bring restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I bring you special greetings from God's servant, our Father and the Lord, Apostle Samson. Father, please put your hands together for Jesus in his life. And I want to celebrate you all. Please celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself. Is that how you want to celebrate yourself? Celebrate yourself as special people. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you happy? Are you happy? Can you extend that excitement to the person sitting by your side? If the person is not saying something, make sure you, you shake the person. Make somebody smile. Give someone a smile. Hallelujah. Amen. Is that not good? Exodus chapter 19. Exodus, le chapitre 19. Mm. Exodus chapter 19. Exodus 19. Verse 5. Le verset 5. Sorry, we had a little technical issue this morning with our sound. So I hope that you bear with us. We'll fix it as soon as possible. Ça sera le son. Non, non, ça sera. 
Verse 5 and 6. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. If you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for the, all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. That's the word that the Lord gave to Moses to speak to the people of Israel regarding the plans that God had for them. This month we started to talk about kingship, priesthood, and the prophet. And last week we looked at each of these offices, what they mean, and we looked at a summary of their responsibilities or their roles. We looked at that of the king, we looked at that of the priest, and also of the prophet. And I believe that we had some level of understanding from that. But today we want to look at three things. We want to consider three things very quickly, still under this broad topic. But if you want, you can put a subtopic under it titled Royal Priesthood. It's a continuation from last, last week's teaching. But we want to focus on the priesthood today and to understand more about this priesthood. We want to know the origin of the priesthood. We also want to know the new era of priesthood which was introduced by Christ, what this means to you and to me. And then we want to finally consider some of the benefits of this priesthood to you and to me. And so we read in that scriptures in Exodus chapter 19, verse, from verse 5 to 6, the Bible said that we are now that God desires to make for himself a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. We also read the same thing in 1 Peter. Sorry, I'm a bit fast. 1 Peter chapter 2, from verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter chapter 2 verse, from verse 1. I'll read from verse 1 to verse 9 so, so that we can have a contextual understanding. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. If indeed you have tested that the Lord is good, as you come to him a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious. You yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. Again, the Bible mentions that priesthood to be a holy priesthood. And for what purpose is this? To offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 12 from verse 1, Apostle Paul told us how this can happen. He says we must present ourselves, our body, as a living sacrifice, which is our reasonable sacrifice, holy, pleasing, and acceptable unto the Lord. Verse 16, verse 6 says, For it stands in the scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Talking about Jesus Christ. Verse 7, so the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe. The stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and an, a rock of offense. They stumbled because they disobeyed the word as they were destined to do. But you, but you, are your chosen race. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, this, this, this letter of Peter was written to the Gentiles. 
This letter was not written to the Jews. If it, if it were written to the Jews, one would understand. It was written to the people in Asia and many other parts of the continent. But he was telling them something here that you are a chosen generation. You are a chosen race. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A people of his own possession. People that God inhabits. People on whom the Spirit of God dwells. The Bible says that we were chosen for the purpose of proclaiming the excellencies of God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So there are three things or Alors, three things on our agenda this agenda afternoon is to go through the origin of the priesthood. Why did God initiate the priesthood? The first time this word priesthood was mentioned was in the book of Genesis. We read last week. And the Bible made reference to that man as a man who had no father. He had no mother. He had no beginning. He had no end. And the Bible called him Melchizedek. Hallelujah. He called him Melchizedek. And the Bible said he was the priest of the law. And Melchizedek was also a king. So, last week we talked about these three offices and how they, they form the foundation of God's dealing with men. The priesthood, the king, ship, and the prophets. But I, 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 I explored the scripture a little bit and I noticed that God didn't have plan for earthly kings. And you can confirm that in 1 Samuel. It wasn't God's plan to have kings. But God had plans for priests and for prophets. I mean, in the physical body. The plan that God had when he called for Abraham was for him himself to be a king over Abraham's generation. God wanted to rule over his dynasty. God wanted to be the one who would decide their destinies. Last week we looked at the the characteristics of a king. And we saw God doing that in the nation of Israel until they demanded for a king. One of the duties that a king does is to protect the territory, is to defend the territory, is to fight the battles of the people. And we saw God fighting this battle repeatedly. We saw God defending them every time. And so God wanted to be in charge. He wanted to be the only king. But the people longed for a physical king. They wanted a king of their own. And if you read that scripture in 1 Samuel, I think chapter 8 or thereabout, you will see the conditions that God gave to them. That when I release a king to you, he will put you through struggles. He's going to recruit your sons into his labor force. He will subdue you and subject you to all kinds of suffering. And they all agreed, yes, we want it that way. So this was not God's original plan. Melchizedek came as a king and also as a priest. So in the, in the plans of God, God has arranged these three offices to meet our needs. Every single need that you have as a Christian or as a child of God. He rules over your life. He rules over your family. And what he says is what stands. The Bible says who is it that proclaims a thing? Or who is it that commands a thing? Commanding is for kings. And it comes to pass when God has not approved it. Before the devil had any dealings to do with Job at all, he needed to take permission from the king over Job's life. And you know, this confusion started now from the days of Samuel, prophet Samuel. Such that when Jesus was coming, they expected an earthly king. And that was their error. But what God had tried to make them to understand from the beginning was that I desire to be your king. In Revelations, he said, I am the king of kings. I am the Lord of lords. And over the scriptures, many earthly kings acknowledge this fact. Acknowledging him as the king of kings. So he wanted to be the king. 
But we wanted somebody to rule over us. God wants to be in charge of your life. Dieu veut être en charge de votre vie. And he thought about what to do. Et il a pensé à quoi and he faire. sent one man. Il un homme. That takes me to the second point. Alors, cela how Jesus was introduced. Point, Jésus a été I told you that the priesthood started with God. Le, le le, avait avec Dieu. And then God thought about it. Et Dieu a pensé à how cela. can I initiate this priesthood est-ce que je peux initier to cela become a physical thing? Pour que cela and in order for that to happen, Abraham had to have a contact Et with pour God que cela se passe, by some exchange. He brought a tithe to God. And the Bible said they ate, they drank the wine, and they ate the bread. This was the first time that communion was issued. And that became an everlasting covenant that both of us enjoy, all of us enjoy today. So why did we have earthly priests? For administrative purpose. For coordination. So that people can be aligned to the purpose of God. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 28. I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. Exodus 28. Verse 1 and 2. Exodus chapter 28. Verse 1 and 2. Then he said, Then bring near to you Aaron, your brother, and his sons with him, from among the people of Israel, to serve me as priest. Aaron and Aaron's sons, Nedab and Abihu, Eleazar and Itamar, and you shall make and you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. You shall speak to all the skillful you shall speak to all the skillful whom I have filled with the spirit of, of skill that they make Aaron's garment to consecrate him for the priesthood. So what was this priesthood? We Alors discussed it last week. Cela, on de cela la they stood passée. between the people and God. Ils sont au milieu des gens et des dieux, de la they stood to offer the petitions of the people to God. Ils les des they represented the people before God. Ils les because at dieu. this time, the order had been disrupted. Car ce temps, a été Man could no interrupté. longer relate with God. Ne and for every time that the priests will approach God on behalf of the people, the Bible said they needed to be a blood. Blood sang. must go. So Le they will kill animals. De, de, an because it's life for life. The Bible vie. said the soul that sins must die. And so when we sinned in Eden, the Bible Alors, said we were pêchons, separated from God. On a été de Dieu. And this separation happened because of sin. Et cette est venue à cause du péché. And as long as there is sin, Et aussi y a le péché, the Bible said that we can no longer have access to God. Those things that are free, freely given to us. Les qui ont été and when God thought about how to bring this thing back again, Dieu a pensé à comment he saw no other person suitable to do it except himself. Pour le faire à part and he first of all came and introduced himself to, uh, to, to, to Abraham. Se à Abraham. And the Bible told us that Abraham had the son Isaac. Abraham avait and Isaac had two children. He saw and Jacob, Jacob of whom God renamed to be Israel. And for Israel, there were 12 children that made the 12 tribes. And among these 12, the word of God said God chose one for this purpose. That was the Levitical or the tribe of Levi. And we call them the Levitical priests. Moses was from the same tribe. Aaron was from the same tribe. And there were many other people. And so God chose Aaron to be the chief priest. Like you have in your villages. Those chief priests who dialogue with the deities. So this order and this structure did not only exist those days. It still exists today. The kingdom of darkness still practice the Le same thing. I remember cela. some years ago when I came into Cyprus and the man, I met with a man of God, my spiritual father, Dieu, and he said to me that you are in the order of the priesthood. I see the garment of priesthood on you. Uh, I had no understanding of it. And that's the reason we want you to understand this concept so that you can start walking in it. So when God thought about how do I interact with these people, there were two things that came to his mind. The prophet and the priest. He wasn't thinking about the kings. Like we said, the king were originated by men, the desires of men. But in any case, it still formed part of God's plan. And the three of them 
made sense when il Jesus came. And so he chose the tribe of Levi Alors, il a la tribe and said, look, Levita. you will hold the things that are holy. Il a dit, Vous allez les so de he Saint. consecrated them to be able to appear before Et him on behalf of the people. Se lui pour les so anytime somebody had an issue, question, they will problème, go to the priest and the priest prêtre, presented their case to God on their behalf. And how does the priest do that? He performs some rituals, some sacrifices, maybe some incantations. We go ahead. So there were there were skills that this priest needed to approach God. And even to the point that the Bible says sometimes if these priests were not careful, they would die in the process. And we saw two sons of of Aaron dying as a result. The Bible said they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord. So being in the position of a priesthood means that you wear the holiness of God. Because the Bible says that without holiness, no man can see God. And so God thought about it. How can I come down to my people? How can I relate with my people again? Let me put myself upon some categories of people. And he gave rules. He talked about the garment that they should put on like we read the Bible said the garment was supposed to be beautiful and that garment was not an easy garment if you read from verse 12 the Bible says and you shall set these two stones on the shoulder pieces of the effort these two stones carried the, the, the names of the tribes six years six years and this man was carrying something wearing something that was so weighty because it was bearing the body of the people. So every time he was wearing those garments, it reminded him of his function, of his duty. We are going somewhere. But the Bible said in Hebrews, if you read from chapter 1 to the end, you would see that Paul Apostle took time to explain this mystery, especially about the priesthood, why God instituted, instituted the priesthood, and why God brought the priesthood through Christ again. Because the rule that God set was that the priesthood must come from the tribe of Levi. But the prophets came from any, any, any other tribe, including the Levites. Jeremiah was a Levite, he was a prophet. So that means that originally he was born into priesthood, but in addition God called him to be a prophet. And there was Ezekiel as well. There were a couple of them. Moses was also a prophet and a priest. Because Moses stood in the position of God anointing Aaron into the high priest. I don't know if I'm saying too much grammar this morning. But I'm driving to something that I hope that we would understand. I want you to understand what happened before and what necessitated the coming of Christ. So what I'm trying to say this morning is that this afternoon is that God had this plan to transition us to his original plan. And when he thought about it, Jesus was the only one qualified. And if you read all of Hebrews from verse 1, you see how the man of God went through it from the beginning to the end. And he brought that Jesus to play. So when Jesus appeared, Jesus did not appear as an earthly priest. Because Jesus was of the tribe of Judah. And there was a reason God made that to happen. That's what I want you to understand this morning. Originally, the plan of God was that every priest must come through the Levitical you know, lineage, the tribe of Levi, one of the children of Israel, of Jacob. But when Jesus came, he came through the tribe of Judah. And of the tribe of Judah, there has never been a priest. God hadn't commanded it to be so. Maybe they were prophets, and mostly they were kings in this tribe. But something was missing. The priesthood to complete it. And that's what Jesus came to do. The kingship was already established. The prophets were already established. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 1. So that we understand this concept. The Bible said long ago from verse 1. And at many times and in many ways. God spoke to our fathers by what? The prophets. He spoke to our fathers by the prophet. But in these last days. He has spoken to us. By his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, 
through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Amen. Amen. So when Jesus came, the Bible says he came in the order of Melchizedek. He didn't come in the order of the biological Levitical priesthood. And there was a purpose for that. The purpose was to disrupt the initial plan and to establish the original plan of God. Meaning to bring every one of us who were not physically, biologically a part of this plan into it. That's what we read earlier in 1 Peter chapter 2 that we who were outcasts were brought in and that was possible through Christ because Jesus himself had to do it first so he came from the tribe of Judah and he violated that rule actually it should have been John the Baptist some, 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 some teaching some theological teaching says that John the Baptist transferred the priesthood to Jesus. Maybe that might be right. Because if you look at it, John the Baptist was a priest. He came, his father was a priest. So by the original intention of God, the plan of God is, is among the tribe of the Levites. Okay, but Jesus didn't come from that tribe. And Jesus became a priest. And not just a priest, a high priest for that matter. But Jesus was not an earthly priest. For what purpose? So that he can bring all of us into the priesthood. So that the priesthood would not be limited to those who are of the biological generation of the Levites. And as a result, Apostle Peter mentioned to us in that second Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, he said, for now we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, that we are called forth out of darkness into God's marvelous light. And I told you he was writing that letter to, be, to the Gentiles, to you and to me. Hallelujah. Amen. So this was the new era that Jesus brought. So whether you are an apostle, whether you are a pastor, you are an evangelist, you are a prophet, you are a teacher, you can operate in this office. And it doesn't matter where you come from. God can bring you into, the pro, into, the, into that office of being a priest. And then what is this new era of priesthood? Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with human hands, that is not of the creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood. What happened as a result? Securing an eternal redemption. Amen. Amen. Securing an eternal redemption. Securing so redemption. when Jesus Christ came and did all of the things that he did, and the Bible said at his death that the veil was torn into two. Now we talked about that veil last week. That veil protected the temple. You know, the, 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 the tabernacle. There was the outer court. In the outer court, we do all kinds of activities, daily rituals. All kinds of sacrifices go on there every day. The priests operate there generally. But the inner court is where the Ark of the Covenant is. And the Bible told us that there are three things in that Ark of Covenant. There was the Rod of Moses. There was the Ten Commandments, the Tablet. And there was also the manna that they ate that was kept there. And the Bible said that the priest entered this place only once in a year. And there was no guarantee that the priest would come out alive. And for that purpose, they usually tie a chair. Chain around his leg. So if they waited for the priest and they didn't hear anything from him, maybe he had died. And what killed him was God's holiness. And they would pull him out. But when Jesus came, he didn't need the blood of animals to access that. So what he did was just to tear up that demarcation. What that means is that you and I can now approach God with confidence. You can now become a priest On over your life. You can now become a priest over your family. You can now become a priest that would declare a thing, the ordinance of God, and it will happen. And you see many priests, a 
Many times they, they, they walk also in the prophetic. Et beaucoup de prêtres souvent sont like dans we le had Samuel. Comme so Samuel. you have the license to walk in that. Alors vous avez la licence de, de marcher aussi dans le prophétique. And I remember those days when I would speak with my spiritual parents. Et pendant parents, ces temps quand je parlais avec mes spirituels, to me, il me disait, God has called you for your family. God has called you as an intercessor for your family. And initially I didn't understand this. But when I started to pray, I started to understand why. And then it gets to a point where nothing happens in my family without my knowledge. Praise God. And we are coming to that, by the way. Where you step into the priesthood, the holies of holies, where Jesus had made possible. And the Bible says when he did that, he did it once and for all. So there is no need to go through that ritual continuously anymore. Like the priests of old were doing. So when Jesus did it, he gave Alors you license. Every one of us had the license nous tous, nous to approach God with confidence. As long as we do that by the Aussi blood of Jesus Christ, no longer Jesus, the bloods of animals. Plus des animaux. So what is the implication of Alors this for you and for me? Pour vous et pour moi? Because that is the question that we would like to answer this morning. So if Apostle Peter said that God has brought us into the priesthood, it means that that priesthood is a place where you can live a holy life. So that your struggles with sin can be over. And that is very possible. Your struggles with addictions can be over. Your struggles with failures can be over. Your struggles with disappointment can be over. Because you know something. When the priestly garment comes on you, you become a different person. Aaron was a natural man. But by virtue of the priestly garment on him, he was not ordinary. So that when men came to confront him, the Bible said that the earth opened and swallowed them. So that when there are deities and principalities of your father's household that want to contend with the destinies of people attached to your life, your family and yourself, you can stand in the place of priesthood and you can stop them. Am I making sense? Because I talk from experience Je le dis par of what practically God put us through de ce que le fait of stopping things that have Arrêter existed before. Qui ont avant. There was an order of failure. Y avait eu there was a pattern of failure. Y avait un, un there was a pattern chèque. of disgrace. Y avait de, there was de a disgrace. pattern that made people to rise and fall. Qui les gens de et de but when you wear the garment of the priesthood and you step into that pattern, you scatter it. You change it. You redefine it all over again. And you tell them, though you say it's not possible, but I came to tell you it is possible. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but I decree that whatever that is not possible in your lineage, because you carry the order of priesthood that Jesus has given to you, you are breaking through in the name of Jesus. I say that you are breaking through in the name of Jesus. There are lineage where the devil have, le you know, established his control, control over. Là. And nobody can Et come out of such level of failure. De ce, de cet échec, then you will see a lot of people in that lineage, nobody ever lineage, gets married correctly. They are about to get married and then they, 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 they become pregnant out of marriage. And that is the pattern. And if you find yourself in such a lineage and you want to break it, you must understand priesthood. You must understand that the anointing of God that God put on Aaron was not a useless anointing. That was the reason that made the sacrifices of the people acceptable unto God. When they offered the sacrifice, God didn't acknowledge it. But when Aaron offered the sacrifice, God acknowledged it. It was the, the same situation with Abel and Cain. They brought sacrifice before the Lord. But God accepted one and rejected the other. And for that purpose, Apostle Paul says, we must offer ourselves a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing, and acceptable unto God. So if you want to offer Alors, acceptable si prayer, and that is what stops all this nonsense. Because as a priest, there are certain things that work with you. The anointing works with you. The fire works with you. Because God instructed them in Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 13. There about. He said, 
this fire must be kept burning. As long as the fire in the altar of your family is burning, devil cannot succeed. Devil cannot manipulate. Devil cannot walk through. So a priest carries fire. A priest is not cold. A priest carries anointing that breaks the yoke. Bible says how Jesus was anointed of the Holy Ghost and he went about setting the captives free. So if you want to set your family free from bondage, if you want to pull them from darkness into light, you must be able to come into this royal priesthood. He said we are a kingdom of priests. When you became a child of God, that door was open to you. And you can step into it. And God can anoint you into it. If you are willing to allow God to walk through you. I tell you the truth. There are certain issues in your family that your prophet cannot solve. There are issues that you are anointed to deal with. And you must be able to step in today and begin to deal with them. And you must begin to tell those devils enough. Up to this point you have succeeded. succeeded but I have come to tell you that there are some people that you can't succeed with. Is there someone here today who wants to rise into that order of priesthood? The Bible said the order of priesthood of Melchizedek, it has no beginning, it has no end. He has no father, he has no mother. It is strange for such a person to exist. And that order automatically establishes you in the kingship where you dominate. You dominate things. You walk into place and then even when you don't want to be identified, the anointing identifies you. Something is speaking for you. You try to hide yourself, but you are unhideable because there is an anointing upon your life. Is it possible for Aaron to pass and people don't identify him? His garment is different. There's no other person that wears the same garment as Aaron. The anointing oil that was used on the high priest, the Bible, the blood instructed them. This combination must not be used for any other thing. Come on, it's not an ordinary oil. It's not the same oil that they sell in the market. This is a special oil. And the Bible says this was the glory that was passing. How much more the glory that Jesus brought. If this glory that was in the life of Aaron was passing out, how much more the glory that God has brought to us through Jesus Christ. And that can make you to walk authoritatively into the territory of your family and stop things. Because when they see the priestly garment, they respect it. The devil respects these three offices. And that's why ignorance of these three offices can cause you delay, can even kill you. We heard that yesterday in the family meeting. When you are ignorant, the devil operates with these three offices. In every territory, they have high priests. They have priests who offer all kinds of nonsense sacrifice. And when we step into that environment, we nullify them. Because we are going in the blood of Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19, say now come with confidence, with boldness to the holies of holies. You are not coming fearfully. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at verse 24. The Bible says, for Christ has entered not into holy places made with human hands which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly, as we said, as the high priest enters the holy place every year with blood, not of his own. For then, he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all. Once and for all, for your afflictions. Once and for all, for your struggles. Once and for all, for failures that has followed you into this service. When Jesus stepped into that realm, he stepped in for your sake. Just like the priest takes the prayer of the people before God, Jesus went and presented your case once and for all. For if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, all things are passed away and now everything is made new. So you come into newness, you come into alignment with the plans and the purpose, the will of God for your life. 
Do you know that it's Savez possible to walk with God to a point where even when you want to sin, you cannot sin pécher, again? It's possible. possible. There were men like David, David whom sin of his lineage, of his dynasty, will not let him rest. But when he understood the office of the priesthood, prêtre, he held on to it a, and that saved his head. Cela. Imagine committing the level of sin that he committed. Murder and adultery on top. But what was the punishment for that? Was death. Because the Bible says that an eye for an eye, when you kill, you must kill. He killed an innocent man. But do you know because the priestly garment was on him, he was preserved. He was preserved. I'm not saying that, I'm not authorizing you to do nonsense. But what I'm telling you is that when, for some reason, something happened that you don't have control over, like some people are suffering the consequence of the sins of their parents today, you can present the blood. I say, I stand in the blood of Jesus. I present the blood of Jesus that my case is different. Say, come with confidence. What are these benefits? I mentioned some of them already. But in order to articulate them, one, you have access to divine secrets. Access to divine secrets. I heard my spiritual father always say that nothing concerning his family that God hides from him. And it was something that was sweet to me. And I decided to connect with such a grace. And to the glory of God, God doesn't hide it. There were some that we just speak it, not as if we were praying, but it happened. I remember a few months ago, it was in the morning, I, was, I just sat on the bed and I was speaking with my dear wife and I said to her, I said, these people, I think their time should be up by now. Why are they, why are they still, what are they still doing? They have done so much evil that they, it's time for them to go. That's all I said. I didn't pray about it. And that same week or the following week was when this one packed up. Praise God. See, when you are anointed into priesthood, you don't talk too much. You don't talk too much. Because you have to talk when God inspires you. And some cases, you don't even know that God is inspiring you. You have said it. And I've seen that happen in my life many times where I said something without a full knowledge of it. And then when I look back, I say, oh, really? God spoke through me. Because you are a priest. Parce que vous êtes un you carry the priesthood vous spirit in you. Cela en vous. And so that spirit is interceding for you. Pour vous. When accident wants to take your life, it shows Quand up like it did for us vie, some three years ago. Comme ça a été I still reflect on that almost every day. Because I here would have been dead by now. Not Car only me, a couple of us, five of us, including our spiritual father, was there. Nous, but you know what the, the order of the priesthood did? It was revealed. Et cela a été révélé. It was revealed. Do you cela know this was revealed many years before? And that's why some of you don't be in a haste to return back home. Ne soyez pas pressé de repartir. Let me tell you a story Je that might help you. Histoire. I know this brother. Je we worked together. Frère, on a travaillé ensemble. And this brother Alors, was frère, in Cyprus and he Chypre, lost everything. Et il a tout perdu. And then he was basically sleeping in the university et in the campus. And so somehow it's like the school managed to give him an accommodation, gave him scholarship, and told him just to work for some few hours. Because we don't just want to give you scholarship for nothing. And he was doing it. It was in his final year, the last semester. And so one day he came to us. He said that there are many problems in his father's house. He believes that if he's there, those problems would have finished. I said yes. I believe so too. But can we wait a little? Do you know that when this guy left Cyprus, he didn't tell us. He had one semester, one semester to finish. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. That if you are not established in that priesthood, there's another priesthood that is calling your destiny. There is one priesthood speaking over your life, whether you like it or not, that is presenting your case against some dirty demons. So where would you rather stand? Alors, Elijah stood that day, he told them, he said, look, I stand to declare the word of God, the ordinance of God, and I pass judgment on your God. And all the priests and the prophets, 450 were there. And they couldn't shake. When fire came, I told you, the priest works with fire. 
Many times fire answers for you. Beaucoup de fois, as le feu répondrait pour vous en tant que prêtre de Dieu. Amen. Amen. Few months after, Quelques mois après, the brother wrote to us, le frère nous a écrit, things are not going well. Oh, les choses ne marchent he wants to return back. How can he come and finish his study? By this time, the university have reversed Pendant all the scholarship. Temps, a repris la bourse. That is everything he needed to pay for Tout bachelor's degree were reversed. Payé, I don't rebours. know how much that is, but that is Ma like 3,000 times 4. Praise God. I said, how do you want to come back? Why did you even leave? Pourquoi Something pulled him. There was an altar that pulled him. Chose il a rappelé. Il y avait un hôtel qui Near a success syndrome. You are just about to tu get it. And they devise every means to pull you back. De ta victoire et quelque chose te retire derrière. That's why you need a priest over your life. If that had not happened to me, I would have made big errors. Actually, I would have died by now. But I listened to the voice of God through God's servant. When I came and after my master's things were not working, I felt like, let me just return back. And then when I went to speak to him, you know, as a priest, you will want to hear what God is saying first. So he presented this case, what should we do? And then he told me, go and pray, because you are also a priest. And then I went and I prayed and I saw the clarity of the vision. And I came and I told him. And he said, well, then we have to wait. And we waited until three years ago. That means I stayed here for about eight years, something. Yeah, about eight years before returning home. And even after eight years, those altars were still speaking because we went into their territory and they territory. knew we were coming. We didn't tell anyone anything. It was it's supposed to be a surprise visit. But they sat at the entrance of the village waiting for us, two of them. One of them is dead now, the one I just mentioned. The many one that will soon pack. You don't need to answer amen because it's a, it's a guarantee. Don't worry. They will soon pack. So that's what I'm saying to you. You need to walk yourself into that order. Why we were, as we step into that village, I don't know it was rainy season, but it started drizzling. And the man of God said to me, he said, this is judgment. This rain is judgment. And as we walked out of that village, entering the car, he said, these people will still attack one more time. But that will be the last time. You need a priest over your life. You need somebody to navigate your path so that you are not walking in confusion. So the devil cannot come and scare you by dreams and revelations. He said, this is the last time. And I was thinking that maybe some years after, but few hours, it wasn't up to two or three hours, this happened. Everyone in that car, something covered us. It's like we were just swept off in the realm of the spirit. And God did that. Because if that didn't happen, perhaps the shock of what happened would have taken our lives. By the way, as we came out of the car before the, the, the thing that was supposed to protect you exploded. That's the, the, the airbag. So if the airbag were to protect, <laughs> that is after the person has died. And the man of God was standing by the roadside. I believe God prepared him. And he said, wow. Il a dit, wow, as we walked to cross the road, he said, sorti, are you people pastors, are you children of God? Pasteur, he saw what happened. We didn't know anything that passé. happened. Pas All of us were ignorant of what happened. So he took passé. us and showed us Alors, where the car went to. Le, now I would have doubted him, to be honest, Alors, if I didn't see the trace si of the tires. Les, les de, because de it was not possible for the car to car go through that manipulation in that short space it was not possible I believe that the angel of God lifted the car two times Je pense que les anges de Dieu ont la deux fois. and that's one of the points I have point as a benefit for you you can't die anyhow as a priest en tant que prêtre, I caught a revelation une and please permit me to share with you Et je veux avec this vous. insight we were praying one day on un jour, and the Holy Spirit gave me an insight. He said, who was it ancienne. that was responsible for your birth? Dit, qui est celui qui était responsible and de I votre said, God, dit, Dieu, who should be responsible for your alors, birth? Qui doit être God, de votre mort? Devil has Dieu. no say in your birth. Dieu he shouldn't have a say in your death. Maybe naissance. you don't understand what I mean. And I stood up, I said, ah. Je me suis levé, dit, wow. And since that day, the fear of death disappeared. Et ce jour, la peur de la mort a ma vie. Because every time death was visiting me, in my sleep, even probably when I was awake 
Maybe there's someone here who is still living in that old covenant. God is bringing you out today. As you step into priesthood, God is bringing you out today in the name of Jesus Christ. Very quickly, we round up. Numbers chapter 20. Let's establish that. How the priesthood protects and preserves your life and destiny. Numbers chapter 20 and verse 25. The Bible says, Take Aaron and Eleazar, his son, and bring them up to the mount to Mount Hall, and strip Aaron of his garment, and put them on Eleazar, his son, and Aaron shall be gathered to his people, and shall die right there. So Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up to Mount Hall in the sight of all the congregation. And then Moses stripped Aaron of his garment, and put them on Eleazar, and Aaron died there on the mountain. So if death has been registered, Alors has si been planned for this man, as long as the garment was on him, he couldn't die. Lui, but the moment the, the, the garment was stripped Mais from him, the Bible says he died de lui, as a high priest. How can a high priest die? Who will do the function? Who is going to stand for your family? Who is going to stand for nations? Who is going to defend the defendless? David prays, Lord, let David my life be precious before you. There's a reason that your life will be precious. Because God doesn't waste his anointing. The anointing Aaron carried was not an ordinary anointing. That he would die anyhow. Or one devil will be responsible for his death. That he will sleep without waking up. Look at the arrangement and the procession of his death. This is the kind of death I pray for. Ordered to death, like you are sure that you are going to die. It's not like something happened by chance. Any devil somehow mistakenly somehow just took away your life. The Bible says, by no chance, they shall not harm you. So that priestly garment was a preservation for the life of Aaron. And your life is also preserved. I say, your life is also preserved. Your destiny is preserved in the name of Jesus. First point I mentioned is that it gives Donc, you access to divine secrets. That is seen in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. Donc, 10, 19. And then I said that it preserves your life and your destiny. What more that the priest would do, it, it provides for you, it, it, we call this divine provision. Ça vous donne une provision divine. Where you don't need to think about anything. Where you don't need to worry about anything. Your life is an all expense paid life. And I see many walking into that this morning. Where you don't need to worry about food. You don't need to worry about clothes. You don't need to worry about anything. The only thing you need to concern yourself is how can I please God? If you can step into that priesthood today, your life is settled. Notre vie sera établie. Look at Numbers chapter 18 on va voir dans Nombre, le and verse 20. 18, le verset 20. Numbers 18 Nombre, and verse 20. 18, verse and the Lord said to Aaron, you shall have no inheritance in their land. Meaning your riches will not come from these people. These people would go to farm and they will toil the ground to make money. But you are, your case is not going to be like this. There is no inheritance. When they shared the land for the people, there was no allotment for the tribe, the, the, the Levites. So then, what is their own portion? portion? Hmm. The Bible says, you shall have no inheritance in their land. Neither shall you have any portion among them. I am your portion. Do you know what that means to me? I am your portion. Anything you want, ask me. Je suis votre portion, tout ce que vous avez anything, de anything pouvoir. on this earth for the tout earth is the Lord and his fullness thereof including those portions that those Même people have I can take it and give it to you so don't bother me. yourself looking at Alors somebody is inquiétez. doing well and I'm not doing well your faire. inheritance is in the Lord as a priest God can take that of the Gentiles and direct them to you when you need it when did you see Aaron or Moses going oh, around begging Aaron people for money? A priest don't beg. Because your needs are provided for, for, by God. Pro, pro, par Dieu. When you start begging, you are Quand violating the rules of priesthood. Already. You are violating it already. Vous without déjà, knowing. And that comes with a consequence. Cela vient avec des consequences. That means you are probably out of that office. And devil can strike. 
When the devil presented this case of Job to God, and God said, have you, I mean, sorry, God presented, God was actually presenting the case. Have you seen my servant Job? And he said, ah, you are blessed him, that's why. He said, Do you think that's the case? Do you think that because I blessed Job, he's serving me? Job, si Job wasn't dire. serving God because of physical stuff. Uh, and the devil wanted a proof and God et gave him the go ahead. Un preuve, une preuve, et le Dieu lui a But there was something la, la the devil said that shocked me. Et y a chose que le he said, have you not protected him? You made a wall around tu him, a wall of wealth. You protected him with wealth. So that richesse. even if Job wanted to be poor, it's not possible. Because, because it's an establishment by God. For I am your Dieu. inheritance. So anything you want, ask of me. Just ask. Just ask. And sometimes before you ask, you already provide it. When you need a car, it will come. When you need tuition, it will come. When you need house rent, it will come. Pastor was testifying now. As a priest, for how many years? Eight years. In Cyprus, he has not paid rent for one month. And you think that is a joke? You need to visit where he's staying to understand what I'm saying. Praise God. Hallelujah. A priest, a priest don't deal with common things. Ne, 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 ne joue pas avec That's why God told them, don't worry about what these people Dieu are dit, ne agitating for. Because you are bigger than this. You are more than this. Because my anointing is on you, I won't disgrace you. So that even when the devil brings disgrace, the Lord just look at him. The Bible says he laughs at them. Because very soon he's going to shock them. And I see God shocking someone here. I see God making a miracle, making a way for you. You must step into that priesthood. The provisions of God, he say, I am your inheritance. I am your portion and your inheritance among the people of Israel. I used to thinking about how tomorrow would be. I used to worried about the food to eat. I used to worried about some some years ago. I, I, I tried something and I practically got used to it now. When I go out, I don't carry money with me. I don't carry, I don't even think about money. But you have to work on it. You need to understand how God provides. How God makes a way. One day, I went to fix my car and I dropped it at the, at the mechanic and I, I took the, the dolmouche and I was coming home. God showed me something that shocked me. As I sat down, there was a brother by my side and he greeted me. So the way he greeted me, I perceived he knew me. I said, how are you? He said, fine. When I made an attempt to pay, he said, don't worry, I paid for you. Then I said, wow. So even when I want to take a dolmouche, I can't even pay for myself. Do you understand? Say, I am your inheritance. Dit, Just leave your expenses to me. Look, salary can't do what we are saying. Maybe some of you need salary because you need salary. to take care of some basic Parce things or maybe you need to learn, have some experience or possibly be valid to say to stay around de, here. But there's more than that that God has a plan for you. What, why am I saying this repeatedly? Because many people have sold their birthright in this Cyprus. But God is restoring you today. Because that is one thing that this order of priesthood does. It restores as if nothing has happened. But if only you will believe and trust God from today. God is ready to restore you. Shall we pray? I don't know how far you must have gone from the realities of God for your life. I don't know how close you were to it and something spoiled. I don't even know how the doubts that you have in your mind concerning God. But right now, Jesus wants to bring you into a realm where you are secured. Into a realm where you are fully taken care of. Into a realm where you don't need to bother yourself where your wife will come from, where your next feeding will come from, where your provisions will come from. He wants to bring you into that priesthood. Are there people who are ready to go into that priesthood today? And something is still holding your back? I'd like you to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today as a prodigal son. And I've tried to do this by myself, but it has not worked. I repent of my sins. And I ask you to come into my life today. I ask you, Lord, to show me your righteousness. I ask you, Lord, to help me to walk with you in holiness, in truthfulness. 
truthfulness, in sincerity, in the name of Jesus Christ, I reject every dealings with sin, and I ask your spirit to come into me, and abide with me today, in the name of Jesus. If you have said that prayer, I decree that everything that is a stronghold over your life, they are broken right now. I take authority over every limitation that is stopping and preventing you from stepping into your destiny that today those limitations are broken Amen. i decree that those chains are broken Amen. i decree that those obstacles are lifted Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. aaron was anointed jesus was anointed you must be anointed will you stand to your feet and just demand for that anointing the fresh anointing the fresh anointing of god father baptize me afresh with that anointing lord that will push me forward the anointing that will take me from the merry clay that will set my feet upon the solid rock he said for the stone that the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone and that is somebody's testimony today if you will open your mouth and embrace the priesthood you will embrace the kingship you will embrace the office of the prophet father i step into the realm of abundance i step into the realm of the prophetic I step into the realm of priesthood, the holy priesthood, the royal priesthood. Lekaba shilabaya, lekaporosa mahatayama. Father, break every tie, every connection with demonic priesthood. Father, deliver us. Ekania shabaya, inte pakoto payarash, lekopokoto seketesh, braka payara. Bring me into your freedom, into your liberty. Ela subayash, eta kabaya, ele pasosia. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. I told you something. There is a priesthood speaking over your life, whether you like it or not, and they can be either of these two or both of them. It can be from the pit of hell or it can be from the kingdom of God. I don't know what is speaking over your life, but how would you know what is speaking over your life is the impact and the result that you see. So are you seeing good impact? Are you seeing significant turnaround in your life? Or you desire something better? You will ask that Lord establish me today in your priesthood. Establish my family in the priesthood of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Establish me in the royal priesthood. Establish me and my family and my generation in the priesthood that does not fail. In the priesthood that dominates. In the priesthood of Jehovah Jireh. Shabbat Lekatetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetet
Amen. I decree that the blood of Jesus dissolve them right now. Amen. That you are stepping into a, a royal priesthood from today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That every covenant of death is broken over your life. Amen. Every covenant of failures are broken over your Amen. life. Every covenant of near success syndrome. Today I scatter them. Amen. I scatter them. Amen. I scatter them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. There's been no pastor in my village entirely. I'm the first pastor that is anointed. So, if I came into the pastoral, into the priesthood, and I've never seen anybody around of me who was a pastor, I've never seen any relative, any member of my family who had a church or any, had any dealing to do with church who took their work with God seriously, then believe that I know what I'm telling you. The only thing I saw around of me were a demonic priesthood. I saw them with my eyes. I heard them. I saw them practice them. These things still exist today. There are altars in your father's name speaking against you. You think you're in Europe. You have to wake up. The reason you can't serve God faithfully is because there is a priesthood in a demonic order that is speaking against you. And they keep you there until the day they will slaughter you. But you will not, that will not happen to you. In the name of Jesus. So that is why I want you to open your mouth and pray. And scatter yourself from every demonic covenant. Every, every ancestry covenant. Every garment of demonic prosperity. Of the order of demons in my life. I scatter them. I scatter them. I disengage myself from such a demonic tie. In the name of Jesus. I disengage myself. I scatter them. I scatter them. I scatter them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me share one thing with you that will encourage you. One night, I got up and I was boarding. But I was not sure of what boarding exactly. But I knew that things were not right with my family. I knew, I'm not talking about myself. I'm not talking about my immediate family. I'm talking about my ties. I'm talking about the journey from the past. And I needed to do something about it. And the Holy Spirit inspired me. And I saw this mob stick. I took that mob stick. And the Bible came to my mind. And I said, how did Moses do it? And I put that staff on the ground. And I decree, I said, Lord, I turn this staff into a serpent. That swallow every serpent. Because when the priest, Moses, appeared, they brought their demonic priest. And when Moses turned his staff into a serpent, they turned their staff into a serpent. But the difference was that Moses' staff was able to swallow theirs. And I said, God, begin to swallow them. Begin to swallow them. Begin to swallow them. I'm going somewhere. And I went to sleep. Somebody's eyes must open tonight. Somebody's eyes must open to see realms of the spirit that are working against you. Demonic orchestrations that are pulling you down. And all of a sudden I disappeared. I believe so. And I appeared in my father's village. It was night. And these people are so wicked. And they had sat down because they have done all of their arrangements, their strategies. They were waiting for results. How would I know that something was cooking in the spirit realm? But something stirred up my spirit that night. And there is a pastor telling you not to pray at midnight. You must be in trouble. Praise God. Hallelujah. And when I saw myself appear Alors, there, I came with that stick. And I shake it on the ground. It's only a high priest that does that. Maybe some of you watch those movies. That was the way I landed. In the midst of them. And I laughed. And I said to one of them. I said, do you know me? And my mouth opened. And I spoke a word. The name of that serpent. Maybe if I've heard it before. Definitely was not in my memory. 
memory. The moment I came out of that revelation, I called my mom. She was online. I said, Mommy, what's the meaning of this serpent? She said, Wow. What happened? And I told her, and she said, My son, you are not ordinary. Let me tell you a story. And she took me behind. How at a young age, the same serpent, she caught that serpent. And that serpent is so dangerous. When it strikes you, you don't last two seconds. Then I had understanding. I said, That means God has already put it long time. It's only manifesting today. Some of you have potentials. There are things that your parents know they haven't shared with you. But you have to provoke those things in your personal work with God. That's why Jesus came to take away that barrier, to take away the old practices so that a new order can start. Maybe there's someone here today that because of you, God has arranged this service because he wants to start a new order with you. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but you have to start something new, something creative, something the devil will see and they will acknowledge that indeed God is at work in this person's life. Who is that person? Lift up your voice and decree and say, Father, begin with me the new order of priesthood in my family. An order that have not been seen before. Start it with me in the name of Jesus. Turn that into a prayer. La poco socoto balarayabash. Le que te pataca bayara balabra. Father, start with us. Father, start with us. In the name of Jesus. Father, start with us. In the name of Jesus. Father, start with us. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I know I've shared this before. There's a reason I share this. Because there's somebody here and you think that nothing good can come out of your life. But there is a deposit of grace that wants to find expression tonight. But there are testimonies that activate those kind of grace. That's why I share with you. And they said, this was about my elder sister. And they had concluded she was not going to get married. They looked at her in the face and they said, we are waiting for you to get married. And when they tell you they are waiting for you, they are really waiting for you. And so she told me, I said, who is it that says a thing? And it comes to pass when God has not commanded it. Let us go into prayer. We prayed for years. And in the place of prayer, every night, I kept speaking. I said, this year, you must marry. If I be a child of God, this year, you must marry. That year passed, she didn't marry. We stepped into another year. I said, if I'm a child of God, this year, you must marry. I kept saying it until she got married. You don't understand? A priest don't give up. There is no going back. You stand your ground. You stand like Elijah. He said, how long shall you stand between two opinions? I am not standing between two opinions. I know where I stand. I stand and I am established as a royalty. There is a crown on your head. And you must not let it waste. Your family is waiting for you. Your generation is waiting for you. But you must tear it up. Recently, my mom called me. And she said, so, you, my children, are not only being a blessing to me now, but your friends are now being a blessing to me. I said, wow, I've never even seen that coming. I didn't see it coming. Where the people that God is helping us to impart now become a blessing to them. I'm talking of physical blessings. This happened a couple of times. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you don't break it, you will stay there. Some of you are blessed with skills, with wisdom, with business, but you can't go beyond a certain limit. You can't even try before you give up. There is a demon that is oppressing you already. And you have to break loose from it. Some of you go into classrooms you can't understand a thing. You have studied, done everything possible, but nothing, nothing, no comprehension, no retentive memory. I failed two times. I repeated the class two times, but after that, I saw something different. Your failure is over. Amen. You will not die cheaply. Amen. You will not die cheaply. Amen. Lord, activate us. Seigneur, active Let nous. your oil come alive yes. in every life, Amen. in every destiny. Amen. Lord, let today mark the beginning 
I saw that stone just rolling away Jesus now. That stone that stood between Lazarus and his miracle is rolled away right now. Amen. That limitations are rolled away because God is coming through for someone. Amen. I heard this testimony some years ago. My spiritual father shared with me. And I want to tell you that only a priest can do such a thing and go free. There was this woman, a witch, in the neighborhood. They said this witch can call a calabash out of the belly of a goat. Real. And so, okay, calabash. Praise God. God will give us <laughs> the right word. Not like a pot or something, Il fetish peut, something. Okay. Un cala, un cala, praise God. Uh. You know, so <laughs> praise God. Now, this witch could do that. And peut, everybody in that area et were scared of this woman. And so one day this woman cooked. And this man of God, that time, the priest was still in this original, en how do I put là, it? Organic, um, raw form. Niveau, unprocessed uh, form. And then he went through the window or somehow and he went and took the food and ate. Imagine that you ate from a witch and you are preserved. You must carry a holier anointing than that one. You must be That's why Jesus said you will drink poison and you will not feel like you took anything. I don't know how many poisons you have drank and you didn't even know about it. And many of them, many Alors, cases, many stories, people cas, in the family that nobody could talk to, this man of God will talk to for free. De Dieu à ces for librement. free. Do you want to step into that today? Do you want to break, break away, break away, break away? I will leave you to go home and continue to pray. I just say these testimonies to stir up your spirit that you can do it. Am I trying to say that these things are easy to do? It takes a lot of night prayers. It takes a lot, a lot of studying of the word of God. And it takes a lifetime of your walk with God. Because it's not a one-time affair. You must take your stand today. I want to pray for just a few people who want to take a stand with God. Because I tell you the truth, if you don't take a stand with God, we will be wasting our time coming to church every Sunday. I want to take a stand with God. I just want to see your hands lifted. I'm not going to ask you to come up. I just want to pray and trust God with you. So that by contact of that hand lifted, God will begin something mighty in your life. Father, I pray, if that hand is lifted, lift it very well. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will visit your sons and daughters today. Amen. I call for the covenant of God upon this commission yes. to locate you. Amen. I call for the covenant of royalty Amen. to locate you. Amen. I call for the covenant of priesthood Amen. to locate you. Amen. I call for the prophetic ordinance to locate you. Amen. I decree that the angels of God will walk in your favor. Amen. I decree that the association of those angels will be empowered around of you. Amen. That from today your life will not be ordinary. Amen. From today you will rise up and never fall. Amen. From today, you will be a voice to your generation. Amen. From today, your mouth and your speech will matter in the spirit realm. Amen. You will speak and the devil will know that an anointing has spoken. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever that is dead in your life, whatever ever that is dying, Amen. I speak to it like the Lord said to Ezekiel. Amen. Speak to these dry bones. I speak. Every dead thing, I speak life to it right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you Lord. Receive all the praise. Amen. Receive all the glory. Amen. Receive all the honor. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can you please put your hands together and celebrate Jesus? I know you can do that better for Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Just have 10 minutes more and uh, we'll be out of this place. Has God really blessed you? Did somebody come with an expectation and did God meet that expectation? I gave a word earlier and the Holy Spirit prompted me to remind, to say it again. There's someone here, I saw this person, your father is thinking of taking a second wife and he has told you. And it's really an issue to you, you've been thinking about it. The Lord gave a wisdom and I would like to share that with you after the service. Please make sure you see me immediately after the service. Hallelujah. Let's quickly take our offering and our tithes and our seed and everything that you
would like to honor God with. Please package your offerings and your tithes. Hallelujah. And while you're doing that, we'd like to use this opportunity to acknowledge everyone who are worshiping with us. If today is your first time of being in this place and you just want to add, or somebody sitting by your side, just help the person wave their hands. I think I see some faces. Let's celebrate them. Just wave and uh, let us identify with you. Today is your first time. Praise God. We celebrate you. God bless you, sir. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. At uh, the end of the service, our team will meet with you and they will tell you more about the church. Please let's celebrate and welcome him one more time. I know you can do that better. You can do that better. Hallelujah. If you are close to him, please work on him warmly in the name of Jesus Christ. Part of the things that God uses to help us to grow in this commission is our money devotions. Our money devotions come from the devotional that was just read um, in the course of the service. So this devotion is for the entire year from January until December. So in case you do not have a copy of it, we have some of them at the book um, stand on your way out. Please make sure you pick one for yourself and for your family. Devotions are very important. They are part of the things that help us to grow and to be nurtured into this priesthood that we are talking about. So please make sure you pick one for yourself or pick one for a friend as an instrument of evangelism. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. We meet every Mondays and Wednesday, Mondays and Wednesday at 6.30 a.m. on our Zoom platform for just a 30 minutes devotion together to do that devotion together. So start your day with us, Monday, Wednesday. The other days you'll do it by yourself so that we can encourage people to grow um, you know, in their relationship with God. Um, we announced last week that our Light of the World Conference will be happening in the month of June. So I hope that you are preparing for that prayerfully continue to prepare. We trust God that God's servant will be with us here. Hallelujah. Amen. You're happy about that. Please celebrate Jesus. <laughs> will be with us here and it's going to be a very powerful moment of um, sharing fellowship together and being impacted by God. Hallelujah. Um, finally, last week, Friday, we had a very powerful time of prayer at the Carinia University. If you were there, celebrate Jesus. Um, that was two nights ago. Um, uh, two nights ago, fr this Friday that passed. This Friday again, we shall be meeting at the Carinia University for another moment of prayer. You know, prayer is one of the things that would help you. It's one of the instruments that will help you to kickstart that anointing and to connect with the, the order of this priesthood that Jesus has given to us. So do not neglect it because the Bible said clearly in that book of Hebrews, it said uh, that we should not neglect the gathering of the parents. If you read from Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 19 downwards, you see, because by doing that, you cannot come into that priesthood. So let's continue to meet together, sharpen each other together, and pray together in Jesus' name. If you have packaged your offering and your tithe, please be on your feet as we go ahead and uh, pray over them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege to give. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your nourishment. Lord, thank you for those who you have given job, those who you have given businesses. And for those who are trusting you for any of this, Lord, we ask that this week you will visit them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every title the Lord rebuke the devourer on your behalf, cause the windows of heaven to open to you. As you give, you will receive in multifold. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So we're going to have just um, 10 minutes of, of praise and then we'll be rounding up the service today. Just uh, find a praise partner. On Friday, we couldn't have some time for praise. And um, we did promise that we'll give you some time of praise today. So uh, please enjoy it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please celebrate Jesus. Yeah. 
Him, please come forward. Hallelujah. Let's keep jamming those hands together for Jesus. Please come, come forward. Keep celebrating him. Keep celebrating him. Hallelujah. You know, um, there's a saying that soldier comes and soldier goes. Barracks continues to improve. <laughs> we just, we just paraphrase it. Um, in this mission, one of the things that God helped us to do is to build destinies and to release them. Okay? We build, we retain, we nurture, we release when it is time. And um, in most cases, they have prayed and they have also received a direction from God to move forward to the next phase of God's direction for their life. I've been in touch with Ramiton and um, um, today would be your last Sunday, right? Today. Last Sunday was your last, no, I mean today is your last Sunday. Yeah, okay, praise God. That means, he'll, I mean, last Sunday, fellowshipping, <laughs> yeah. hallelujah. So he'll be traveling this, this weekend, I, I guess. Um, I want us to pray for him. I believe that God has deposited a lot in him. He said, go into the world. Make disciples of all nations. Let's pray that, Lord, let your hand be heavy upon the life of your son. Stretch forth your hands and just pray for him. Father, make your hand heavy upon his life. Make your hand heavy upon his life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, order his path. Order his steps in this journey of life that he will not fail. In the name of Jesus, Lord, overwhelm him with your power. Overwhelm him with your glory. Everything you have equipped him with. The devil will not shut it down. In the name of Jesus, he will find expression of the anointing of God and of the call of God upon his life, even as you take him to nations of the world. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Heavenly Father, we commit your son, Milton, into your hands, Lord. We decree by the authority of your Holy Ghost that, Lord, as he moves, we send him forth to greatness. Amen. You are not departing in vain. You are loaded. And every giftings and blessings of God upon your life are permanently sealed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I decree that the God El Shaddai will speak for you. I decree that the angels of God will be, will be associated and released concerning your life. Angels will be allocated concerning all that pertains to your destiny. We will never hear of failure. We would never hear of disappointment. Every situation in your life, the Lord turned them into a testimony. Amen. The great things that God has done in your life in this land will not stop. Amen. They will continue to grow. They will continue to increase. You will mount up with wings like those of eagles. You will soar. You will never fall. You will never fail. Even when it is tough, the Lord will carry you on his eagle's wings. The nations where God will take you to, you will dominate. You will possess in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we release your son into your hands today. And Lord, we anoint him with your holy, holy oil. And we decree that, Lord, your hand rest upon him. Amen. We decree that your favor come upon him. Amen. We decree that your miracles never dry from his life. Amen. We decree by that this oil, Lord, you will uphold him. Amen. You will strengthen him. In the name of Jesus, breathe upon him. We release you today into excellence. We release you today into a life of abundance. We release you today 
into productivity. Everything your hand finds to do must prosper. Every investment you have invested in the kingdom of God upon this land, they will speak for you. You will never lack. You will never be frustrated. You will not be confused. The Lord will be in charge of your life. You are a miracle to your generation. I decree that the hand of God will strengthen you. You will preach the gospel to the nations of the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Receive all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please celebrate Jesus. And so, as our custom is here, we always like to send forth our people with something to, to act as a point of contact. Something that you can always look at and trust God that where you are coming from, we'll always continue to remember you in prayers and we'll be in touch. We still have a long way to go, I believe, in Jesus' name. So on behalf of the custodian of this ministry and the entire membership family of this house, I give you this. This is an award of um, appreciation for kingdom service. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please celebrate Jesus. Please do that better for Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. If you have been blessed today, make that better for Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to hold the hands of someone by your side as we declare our love for one another. Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter will always say, greet one another with a holy kiss. But now we're not doing the kiss because we need a teaching to know which one is holy. Uh, <laughs> so let's, let's sing the one we can sing. Praise God. Oh, everybody just hold somebody. Oh. Tell them that I love you. Say, Lift put your hands together and, and praise the Lord. Everybody just hold oh. somebody. Hey. Tell yeah. them that I love you. I love you. Lift your hands together and praise the Lord. One more time. Lord. Everybody just hold thank you for today. We thank you for the blessings that we have received, the blessings of fellowship, the blessings of your word, the blessings of healing, the blessings of deliverance, blessings of direction. We thank you for eyes that are open. Thank you for ears that are open. We thank you for understanding that have been restored. And Lord, as we go into this week, we commit your children into your able hands. Lord, I pray that you will cause your face to shine upon them. Lord, I pray that you will cause them to prosper in their businesses. Lord, I pray that you will cause them to flourish in every aspect of their life. Lord, I pray that you will keep failure away from them. I pray you will keep sickness away from them. 
Lord, I pray you will keep reproach away from them. I pray you will carry them on your eagle's wings. I pray you will bless them. I pray you will cause your face to shine upon your children. I pray that all that their hand finds to do will prosper. Lord, that when they shall return back next week, they shall return with abundance of testimonies. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lift up your right hands as we take our declaration together. You say after me, I am soaring. I am sorry. On Christ's eagle's wings. On Christ's eagle's wings. I am untouchable. I am untouchable. I am unreachable. I am unreachable. I am indestructible. I am indestructible. The devil has no portion in me. The devil has no portion in me. I am a winner man. I am a winner man. I am secured. I am secured. I am prosperous. I am prosperous. I am dignified. I am dignified. I am a royal priesthood. I am a royal priesthood. And I am conquering. And I am conquering. I will continue to conquer. I will continue to conquer. Because Jesus, because Jesus is, on his is on his throne. And you will say what? Fire. Fire. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. And what would your declaration be? I am blessed. Can you say that two more times? I am blessed. Now say it for the rest of the week. I am blessed. The Lord bless you. Please make sure you greet someone on your way out. See you next week and stay blessed.